Hi everybody, this is Raquel Palmisi and this is Marina, <laughs> Marina Kritab. <laughs> and welcome to Wisdom Wednesday. Uh, this is a rather spontaneous thing that we're doing. Marina just decided to join me for, for this live. So let's see where we go. We, um, I love this person. And I think one of the inspirations for inviting her in today um, is that we represent two very different generations. And, um, you know, what's been coming in all morning, uh, in case you got to read my email invitation, has been about walking a spiritual path and what it means and how it's almost like over my lifetime, which is over 70 years, I have. <laughs> She's actually young enough to be a grandchild of mine. And so <laughs> what I've watched over all this time is that the belief systems, especially the religious belief systems um, of our culture and around the whole world, a lot of the religious belief systems have been shifting, sometimes really falling apart. People mm. have drifted away from, in, in a large part, from their organized religions in many ways. And, mm. you know, the New Age uh, really came in to represent a freedom of thought, a freedom of expression, and indeed, you know, a new kind of spirituality evolving. In, in the course of all that time, uh, a lot of people drifted away from spirituality mm -hmm. altogether, became agnostic, sometimes atheistic, and um, that's all fine. I've heard people say, yeah, I don't believe in God, but I sure feel something when I'm out in nature. Mm -hmm. And I say, well, you are a spiritual person in spite of yourself. You don't have to believe in a, you know, in a strange formation in the sky to, be controlling everything to be spiritual. So, you know, so over the course of my lifetime, these huge like tectonic plates of belief have kind of been falling apart. And we, we end up here with a being like Marina, who, who in essence is one of the most highly spiritual person people that I know. She is so guided that she rarely needs to talk about it. And yet it underlies just about every conversation we have. Of, mm -hmm. Well, what do you think, Raquel? Are we supposed to do this? What, you know, what's your feeling? What's your guidance? And, you know, so I know for me in my life, it's been a revolution. I grew up as an Orthodox Jew. Um, didn't last long with me. Uh, I never felt at home in that container. I understand and love the community that my religion provided, but it didn't give me the soul satisfaction or the feeling of knowing God um, that I later came to. So I am really grateful to have been alive during my lifetime to witness this revolution um, and see where we go ahead. So, mm -hmm. so Marina, I want to ask you, like, what is it to you? What does it mean to you to be on a spiritual path at your mm -hmm. age? Mm -hmm. Wow. I think it's to connect and reconnect and reconnect with one's inner guidance and the divinity within themselves, the divinity within all things, all life, um, to witness it fully and uh, to be embraced by it, you know, um, to, to feel it in their every day from when you wake up and you first start to open your eyes and look around the room and realize, yes, I'm here again on this planet to making breakfast to uh, just the everyday things um, to really be touched by life um, that to me is is what it means and, and feels uh, to feel uh, spiritually connected mm -hmm. to myself and to the world spiritually connected mm. that's 
that's a big thing and a lot of people feel like they have a hard time being connected getting connected and they try to do all kinds of things to get connected and I think what we are discovering especially as we're together is that that connection is right there it's just that we're looking for something else we're looking to feel something different but this realm of spirituality is right here right now and if we if we feel it if we breathe into it we take a deep breath together we be you know it's almost like our beings start morphing together yes. and we can feel <laughs> exactly. <laughs> my hair. we can start feeling <laughs> each other and you know i i feel her her joy of life begins to infect me and uh, energetically we start exchanging you know wow. a lot and creatively when we are together because marina does a lot of the creative work with me uh, <laughs> bringing me out of the dark ages and having me do things like this <laughs> when that creativity starts spinning between us and we have our conversations there's a list of things that would like to evolve that's a mile long in five seconds creation is there god is present really beautifully and for us to recognize that yes th this is connection this is it it's not that some foreign force it does happen a lot when mm -hmm. you know um, when we're going through our processes and we're feeling our deep emotional clearings that happen and we're basically on our knees praying for resolution to that which is trying to move through us those encounters with God are very serious mm. they are very meaningful they're very uncomfortable so being on a spiritual path really means being on a path that's guided just like Marina said before mm. it means letting go of control in yes. a lot of ways letting go of our own control of mm. the way we think things should roll often we are in our culture you know we I want to manifest this I want to bring this in I want I want I want but a true spiritual path is not really about that is it it really is it's uh, it's 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 actually listening to yeah. what serves our highest needs Absolutely. to ask that voice within us that that voice that surrounds us that voice of spirit of God and all the many names that we give to to God to spirit to ask rather not what I think I need but what do I truly need mm -hmm. what serves my highest good my highest needs right now and if we really listen if we really listen with a willingness to obey what we hear yes. <laughs> to trust <laughs> yeah that's kind of the hard part that's the hard part yeah <laughs> that's the scary part sometimes I'll look up and say you really want me to do that <laughs> <laughs> tell your story about your heart in this way oh my what, goodness yeah. okay okay so I have been on uh, a journey to buying my own harp I'm a harpist and right now I'm renting a harp from my teacher he's Paraguayan and he's just such a beautiful soul so I'm looking to adopt my own and I visited this woman um, who had many harps available and I had this idea this whole time of what it was going to look like. I was so attached to the look of it, right? And then I found the one that exactly I imagined and I didn't feel connected to it. So. I play all of these harps of hers and I didn't love all the sounds. And there's this harp in the center of the room and I said to her can I play that one I really would like to play that and she goes no it's not for sale 
and I was like, that's okay. I just would really love to play it. Um, I'd love to hear what it sounds like. And she goes, well, I suppose that's okay. So I sit down and, and I close my eyes and I played like I had never played before. And what came out of me moved me so deeply. The, the sound of this instrument actually brought tears to my eyes. And I opened my eyes and I, I looked at her and we just had this moment where she knew very well that though the harp wasn't for sale, perhaps it had to be for sale at this point. <laughs> and so afterwards we had this conversation and she goes, okay, well maybe I'll consider this, maybe I'll open to this. But I just feel this, um, this story and this thing that happened in my life it reminded me of how important it is to be open to um, to your connection to, to spirit and to source and not not feel so attached to these ideas that we have of what outcomes should look like, what you should look like with, with a certain person or instrument or outfit or thing, um, rather just surrendering to the moment and, and listening to hmm, I'm curious about that, listening to your curiosity and then being swept away swept away by the beauty of that mm. <laughs> yeah that's beautifully told <laughs> that those those miracles that can happen when we actually surrender and listen and show up and speak mm. a truth that something may seem impossible and then all of a sudden it becomes possible yes. all of a sudden Absolutely. spirit steps in and you know it's easy for creation to clear logistics for mm -hmm. us it's, we're the ones that get all hung <laughs> up feeling it's impossible yeah. so mm -hmm. you know I think one of the one of the main things about choosing to be on a true spiritual path and you know a true spiritual path exists also within organized religions I, I mm -hmm. don't want to um, I don't want to say that there's a separation there at all that, you know, I've worked with priests, I've worked with ministers, rabbis, and all kinds of representatives of different religious um, belief systems. But the one thing that we all have in common is that we're all seekers of truth. Wow. That even more than that, we have a love of spirit. We have a love yes. of God, no matter what we call him, her, them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. No matter how we personify yeah. it, no matter what picture comes in our mind of the deities, whether it's angels or light beings or however it comes to us, we have to remember that we are all individual, unique souls with mm. representing realms, uh, uh, you know, of, of lineages spiritually absolutely. absolutely which may exist within our religion and it may not mm -hmm. and we know when we're not comfortable with a belief system so stepping on yeah. a true spiritual path means that means that we are opening our hearts that we are serious seekers and if we're a serious seeker we kind of know it don't we it's like we've known it from when we were this big. We, we came in knowing that. Yes, oh, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. It's like we're the two-year-olds that see the fairies and the ferns, you know. It's, <laughs> and, it, and it just goes on from there. And the parents say, that's very nice, dear. And then we're 12 and we're still seeing them. The parents say, maybe you want to do your math homework now. <laughs> Good. Exactly. But they're fairies. <laughs> This is so true. So, you know, stepping on a true spiritual path is really a real surrender. Mm. And it, it is not a path that is often very well lit. You know, as hard as we might try to see where it's trying to take us, we often don't. We may get okay. an inspiration of the next leg of our journey. Okay, you know, you're meant to move to Maine. What? And okay, I say, all righty, I'll go for that because I'm hearing it and it keeps showing up. And I open a magazine and there's a picture of Maine and I, you know, hear a song and it's all about Maine and, you know, it just keeps kind of haunting me like a book <laughs> will fall on my head from a bookshelf and it opens to a map of Maine. I guess I'm being prompted to 
really go there mm -hmm. change my life and if I say yes to that that is sort of my demonstration to the universe that I am listening I'm willing to obey and some of these hits these promptings are very off-putting sometimes they're just a test mm -hmm. to see if we're ready I remember some very big things that were asked of me um, I was asked to leave a marriage uh, after 32 years which turned out to be a wonderful thing for both of us at the end of the day as painful as it was I now know that where it would have been full of guilt for me and it was uh, for a long time religiously speaking it might have felt like I was committing a sin by doing that but actually it was the voice of God that was trying to break up something that was out of integrity spiritually it was holding us both back and we're more than best of friends now and so, so sometimes life asks us for bear, to step into an unknown that doesn't feel right at all it fills us with all kinds of things that we have to process right and that process can be very painful the guilt the shame the anger, the fury, the fear, oh, the fear that can come up when we're asked to do some of these things is, um, is enormous, but it's meant to help us clear, right? Wow, it's, yes. it, it comes up, it, it comes up because it has to come up or we would never process it. Wow. And we would never get clear enough or brave enough to make the next big moves in our life. That makes so much sense. So, you know, so buying that perfect heart exactly. leads you to whatever the next thing in True. your creative life or your general life to trust that, no, I'm going to ask, I'm going to try. Exactly. Right? Yeah. So, choosing, choosing a spiritual path and a real one we have the choice of how deep and how far we want to go on it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes on a spiritual path we get to a real why in the road. Where we have to make a choice. One why, one side of the why is a very wide looking boulevard, you know, full of lights and we can see where it goes. The other one is kind of a path that is windy and it's got a lot of rocks on okay. it. Spooky. There's spider webs everywhere. Spider. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so let's yeah. choose that one. Let's choose that one. Let's choose that one. And let's continue to evolve knowing that spirit that God is intertwined in our life mm -hmm. when we choose a path that we have the gift of co-creating that life with something big and beautiful and meaningful and we become a representative earthly representative of what's possible Absolutely. yes Absolutely. so this comes to you from intergenerational love here and bless you. Thank you bless you bless you and we will see you next wednesday thank you thank you marina thank you Raquel. <laughs> okay here we go bye bye, bye, -bye. <laughs>